Back in the Dark Ages, Essex was renowned for the trials and subsequent persecution of local women thought to be witches. Witches are traditionally believed to be buried at a crossroads. Here in the tiny village of Great Maplestead, there's a mystery surrounding a posy of wild flowers, which is mysteriously placed on the unmarked grave of a local witch named Polly Miles. John Roos is a practicing Essex witch and researcher of paganism. In the Middle Ages, Samhain was considered a, a major festival simply because it did mark the start of winters, and winters in those days were considerably harsher than they are today. It was what was called the, the third harvest. Um, the first two are really agrarian, and the third culled the animals, those that weren't likely to survive the winter, the weaker ones. It was the time when uh, villages would stock up and put by and save up for the winter. And because the villagers were facing such a hard time, the local lord at the castle, the castle head in them over there, he gave a great ball for all the villagers, for everybody local around. And it would be pretty well the only time in the year when the people were allowed into the Great Hall. And it was the last major uh, event um, before the onset of the winter. And of course, many of the people then, they would have died. They would have suffered from the cold. They didn't have the benefit of the central heating uh, and the, the necessarily the warm clothes that we have to die. So it was, in fact, a very major event to these people. It was the time also when they reflected on death. It was the time when they reflected uh, upon their ancestors. And it was considered in Celtic times to be the beginning of the new year as well. And so, all in all, it was a very major evening this uh, particular night when Paul Mal, uh, Polly Miles, for whatever reason, met her end. Our story begins nearly 250 years ago. In those far off days on Halloween, a great ball was held in Heddenham Castle for the villagers to mark the onset of winter. A local girl, Polly Miles, attended that ball and it was the very last time that she was ever seen alive. It was a particularly hard winter that year and it wasn't until the spring thaw that Polly's body was discovered, perfectly preserved, floating in the castle lake. Local legend has it that she was swum as a witch, whilst others say that she took her own life in despair at the loss of a loved one. Either way, Polly was buried here, still wrapped in her scarlet robe, at these crossroads, a traditional witch's burial site. Perhaps there is still a traditional witch's coven in the area who remembers the death long ago of a sister of the craft. Canudon is world famous for its stories of witches, so much so that every year at Halloween the village is sealed off to sightseers and those who would regard this as a more sinister festival. Canudon Church stands on a hilltop and is believed to have been a site where the old religion was practiced. There's a local story of a George Pickingill who was said to be a practicing witch and was in league with the nine witches of Canudon. He's believed to have exerted such a power over them that by simply standing on the threshold of his cottage and whistling, all the village witches would appear. George Pickingill is believed to be buried in an unconsecrated part of the churchyard. The church tower at Canudon was built by King Henry V as a thanksgiving for his victory at the Battle of Agincourt. However, a local legend does exist that when one of the nine witches of Canudon dies, a stone will fall from the parapet of the church tower. <laughs>